Hello, and welcome to Apex Instant Tips, episode number 102. I'm your host, Anton. We have with us today our special guest, Hayden. Hi, Hayden. Always great to be here, Anton. <laughs> Hayden, uh, this tip is, well, first, I think it's really an important tip. It's something that I've, I've learned uh, that I don't think I, I don't, I didn't fully understand the, these capabilities. Um, it's also a tip that we've um, only, uh, only really put together in the last 30 seconds. Um, so uh, we'll see what we can do here. But before we get, before we, I, I'm gonna cheat just a little bit. Five minutes is really quick. There's a little bit of language that I think it's important for people to understand. And that's around optimistic, pessimistic locking, um, but, but mostly preventing lost updates. Um, in short, um, preventing lost updates is about me not being able to override your changes. What, you know, what are your thoughts on that? What's, what's your example? Oh uh, yeah. So um, if I am editing a record uh, and you're simultaneously editing the same record uh, without prevent lost updates, whoever submits their, their um, form second will override the previous cha person's changes. Yeah, and Oracle Forms used to do um, optimistic locking. It, it assumed that you would, um, that you, if we both, if I brought up a record um, and I started to make a change, it would prevent you from even starting to make the change. Um, mm -hmm. And that was a state, stateless environment or a stateful environment. Apex is stateless, so a Apex takes the other approach. It checks when you submit the page in. Um, and, and one of the reasons I think people, people don't even think about this is because the, the underlying technology normally handles this for you. Um, like I said, Oracle forms handled it, Oracle ADF handled it. it. A lot of things handle it and Oracle apex handles it. If you use, um, if you use out of the box functionality, you create your forms based on wizards forms based on a table, all these kinds of things. Um, but as soon as you start stepping out of that and you do this yourself, you have to present prevent lost, lost updates yourself. And we even did a whole episode on if you're using APIs and so forth, um, how you can prevent last updates, but. That's right, we um, did a whole episode on uh, using the methods on tables utility, which uh, facilitates generating MD5 rec um, uh, values for a given record. Yes, and this tip augments that by showing you a, a way Wow, that I didn't realize. I, I just something I didn't realize we could happen. That that Apex can can do this in a way um, that's really interesting to me. So right. with that, I've mm -hmm. already wasted well, more time. into something else. But yes, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, okay. yeah, And Hayden, could you plus your screen up just a little bit? It's um, was, it's sorry, very I small. This is my screen. Oh, that's the wrong screen. Okay, let's uh, remove that. The other screen. There we go. I got it. There. Okay. Um, if yeah, perfect. Um, so let's kick this off and uh, show yes. people what we have. So uh, what um, viewers will immediately notice is um, I've got a view here um, in my form on a report where I have a um, uh, where I'm representing the one-to-many relationship between departments and employees. So uh, behind the scenes, that view looks like this. So I am list agging the emp IDs into this view. And uh, ordinarily, um, uh, that would mean in order to process this in the back end, uh, if I were to take a look at my uh, form, uh, one would intuit that in the, the process, I might have to uh, execute uh, Choose the execute code, code. Well, right. You wouldn't be able. You can't use automatic row processing because you can't. You can't update a, a, a view like that. You, you can't do that at all. So you you have to change that to execute code. And that's what I would have always done in the past. I would have changed it to execute code. And as soon as I change it to execute code, I lose lost update protection. That's right. But what did you do that I didn't didn't even think about? What did you do instead? Yeah, so, so I believe this is a new innovation as of like Apex 19 um, under the automatic row processing, which, which gives you those critical um, uh, settings of prevent lost updates and lock row, you can pass in the same code that you might otherwise pass into execute code. So the same methods and tables logic that you, the, the tappy zappy logic that you might be using, you can use in this context using- So you've uh, changed target types. type. You've changed target, target type from 
table or view to PL SQL code, which so, so our, our viewers will probably be more familiar with the table or view option. And then the PL SQL code option is uh, newer. Right. And you can just, you can write anything you want there and you can, you can, if you're doing an insert, you can do an insert update. You can do multiple tables and everything and you get this prevent, prevent lost row update. Right. Thereby facilitating, uh, uh, enabling me to process um, my one to many relationship. Uh, so, so, which means that I, I have the option of making changes here. Yeah. Yeah. And this so, is huge. Yes. Uh, so, so now let's take a little bit of a left turn into a different tip. Um, when I try to apply changes here, I get uh, cannot select for updates for, for from view with a distinct by group by. And I mean, I'm caught red handed. There's it is true that I've got a group by here. And um, uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, yeah, because this is not a key preserved view. There's no key that is there. You've got a group by you can't you can't update a group by. Well, first two things I'm going to say. First, you could turn off the lock row. It, you'll, you'll still get lost update protection, but you won't be locking the row. And it's it's an it's not a huge deal to turn this off. There is a, a microsecond or two that a, a user could sneak in and do that. But there is a way you could rewrite your view to get to continue to have the lock row. Right. And that is to write it as a subquery. And so if I rewrite my view, as follows. So it's it's the same data, but now with this as a subquery, I um, I no longer have that issue. But have I in fact introduced a different issue? Well, it's going to work, and it's probably going to work all the way. So let's just look at this. This is this is is now a key preserved table of view because you can do that, but. It's going to work probably through all of your testing, and it's not going to fail until someday in production. And it's going to fail potentially with two reasons. The one, the first is the most common. Um, your list ag does not have an order by on it. And because right. of that, the database does not guarantee what order that thing is going to come in. When Apex computes its checksum, it's going to compute a checksum when you first bring it to the screen. And then it's going to compute another checksum when you submit it in. And so you need to make sure that that is in the same order. So that will take care of that potential problem that most people won't see until they get to production. And this was actually the inspiration for the tip because that this actually happened to me <laughs> this week. So right. uh, in the last 30 seconds, any other um, issues that you might call out in uh, any final um, add-ons? Sure. Uh, in, the, in the craziest, weird scenario, sometimes your database will rewrite this query back to a group by with a join in the background behind, and then you'll run into this the, the same error. Very unlikely, but it could happen particularly with very complicated queries in this scenario. Um, not something I'd really worry about, but a, a, a possible thing that could happen. Right. Uh, I, I was also thinking that we could um, add uh, an overflow message. Oh, yeah, I think that's a really uh, good. Over... Yeah, so so often the, the choice that people want is truncate an overflow, but we actually want um, uh, error on overflow in this scenario because uh, we don't want to accidentally um, uh, on overflow error. Uh, because That's we, right. We, yeah. yeah, and I think it's good to explicitly say that because otherwise somebody might come in later and put in a truncate. You don't want to truncate it because if we're doing this, you don't want to lose the data when you push it in. That's a, a, another great tip. Right. Um, so it was only five minutes. Uh, I think there's potentially uh, more to discuss about this. Um, I wonder if there are folks that have, if there's anyone that has used it in this way, how many people actually change that um, PL SQL, change the automated row processing away from a table or view to PL SQL code, something uh, amazing to me that I had, I had no idea. Um, it, it definitely transforms the discussion around uh, using zappies and tappies. So, uh, when it was the case that you had to generate your own MD5 and pass it back to the database and compare it, uh, I had the perspective that it was quite cumbersome. Um, but now it's uh, it's much more accessible. Yeah, and I'll say uh, I played I've played with this over the last uh, 24, 40, yeah, 48 hours, um, uh, and I, I'm. I, Everywhere that I currently do my own before header process, 
um, to do my own fetch. Um, and so I'm fetching data in and so forth. And then I'm using the execute PL SQL code as the process type. I'm reconsidering it and I'm saying maybe that should actually be a form region with a select statement and an automated row processing as PL SQL so that I get lost at row updates on these things. I think just across the board, I'm going to try to change and not use a before header, my own cr crafted SQL computation or, or select statement um, and, and my own execute, um, execute server-side code, I'm gonna instead use a form to pull that data and I'll use what's called automated road processing, but then I'll switch it to PL SQL code so that I get this lost row update. Um, I've played with it where I've got multiple forms on the same page. Um, and you can display things in wherever you want, but I've got multiple forms on the same page and it does lost row update for, for my child records that are shuttles like that. Just, I'm, I'm, really, uh, I'm really changing the way I, the way I approach this. Yeah, uh, if, you, uh, if you have a form and you're editing the data, no matter what it is, I don't know of a scenario in which you wouldn't want to just do the declarative uh, form and then um, uh, automatic word processing with all of the uh, associated benefits. So, um, uh, so Plamen says, uh, I always did what you did initially, which is what I think um, most people do, right? I don't think anybody does this. Um, so I also think um, the, well, let's say Angel, the select inside a select, I think could save some, could have some performance mostly when you use list tag inside. Oh, uh, no, I don't think so. Uh, never going to be a problem because you're only doing one row. Um, you're only processing one row at a time in something like this. The, this, um, the select inside a select with a correlated subquery, which you have there, super fast. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to disagree on hell. <laughs> I actually think that we could do a tip on that subject. Oh, yeah, we could definitely. Um, uh, and Neilish, you got a big testing team budget. Um, I guess that means that uh, we're able to test um, the scenario where you've got this weird query. I'm not sure what, what, what Neilish is. is. I'm going to say one other thing, though. There are a lot of um, server-side type processes, um, things that you can do, um, execute code, all, all, all kinds of things. I actually think that any one of those could benefit from having the, the, the option to do lost row update. You know, it's only available in, um, it's only available for the automated row, row processing, but I think those options of lost row update, tying it to a form region, could benefit any one of those. So I went ahead and I created a, uh, an Apex IDEA. Yes, I it's, hadn't thought of that, but that's great. Apex IDEA 3017. Um, here, I'll go ahead and just show it um, uh, because I've got it. Um, let's see right here, I'll share that. Um, so here it is um, for all process types, including process plugins. And in particular, I want it for process plugins because you I- You want to up your screen a little bit? Sure. Um, uh, there we go. Um, in particular, I want this feature for process plugins because um, I have a I have a plugin that that handles this shuttle and everything, um, and I want to be able to get lost row update protection just right in my in my process plugin. Yes, uh, and I remember this plugin of yours. Um, uh, I. Uh, I think we did it as an off-topic tip. Uh, ah, that's what it was. Okay. Um, but um, I, maybe worth revisiting as a full tip. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, so there we have it. Um, the, the tip is to consider using um, a form region and automated row processing when instead of Bump, you know, bouncing out to your own fetch and your own that. And then also when you're doing that, if you want to get a key preserved table, list ag, um, moving the list ag up into the select statement. Yeah. That's right. um, so it's a, it's a lot of, it's a big mouthful um, trying to come up with uh, a summary on it. It's tricky. I um, uh, got the goal clearly, but how about a table trigger taking care of the item list to do insert update? Uh, I mean, it well, would work. 
it would work if you had a another column in your parent table. Um, if you had like uh, an employee list column in your parent table, you could do that. You could do it with an instead of trigger as well on the view if you wanted to do an instead of trigger. But in every case, if you want to, if you want to be able to lock the row, the row has to be key preserved. That's right. yeah. uh, that's the key. Um, anyway, so this has been around for a while, uh, but truly something I I didn't know about. Um, so there you go. Uh, any last words on the topic, Hayden? I uh, know I am uh, hunting down your uh, idea and I'm voting for it right this moment. Oh, well, if anybody wants to do the same, it's idea 3017. Go ahead, give it a vote, and uh, we'll see you next week. Now has two votes. Ah. <laughs> Excellent. Um, well, I'm just going to see that skyrocket, I'm sure, because both of our viewers are going to... Uh, are gonna... <laughs> yes, uh, a, a, a bit of a meandering tip, but, but a good one. Yeah. Yeah, well, they've wasted a perfectly good 16 minutes. Uh, we will see you. Oh, what about an instead of trigger? Hey, there we have it. Um, uh, so, um, so we will see you next week, I hope. Um, thanks for all the votes. Have a good week.